for Mars. The bottom line is that unless we rebut these presumptions in the forms provided to us, they stand. And this has been a problem all along. Look, I am I am as frustrated as everybody that it has taken so long to get a handle on some of these areas. But these people operate like Harry Potter. Unless you know the magic word, you never get through the magic door. And and we have gone through, this is a remedy, no it's not, this could be the remedy, no it's not. I am sick to death of it. But what is clear based on all that we've done so far is that there are presumptions in their system that we are dead, or at the very least in a state of limbo, and that they provide to us a very narrow set of uh, remedy. And it appears, based on all that we know, the will has a crucial part to play. Not the only part, but a crucial part to play in rebutting those presumptions. Yeah? Yes, and and, I'm, and and that is really the direction being uh, necessary to take to to correct those presumptions and get rid of them. So placing your uh, the proper deed on record is getting rid of the the presumptions. That's all we want to do. We want to rebut the presumptions. Look, I hope no one thinks in this process that we're going to get a free meal. I mean, I'd love a free meal. But it's not. We're not doing it for a free meal. All we want to do is have an have an ease, even playing field. We just want to have an even playing field. So when we go to court, look. If if I make a mistake, I know I have to pay for it. You know, if I do something wrong, then the law says then there has to be a remedy. But but we haven't been on a level playing field. The system hasn't been fair. It has been cruel and terribly unfair. And all we want to do is get on a level playing field. That's all. That's all we want. That's, that's right. So back to when you were talking earlier, you used the word proper. So the next question is, how do you define proper in an inherently corrupt system? Well, let me answer it, and I, and I don't want my, question, my answers to be you know, long-winded, but let, let me answer it this way. We always said that at the end of the day in restoring the law that we will end up draining the swamp and what will be left are the exposed alligators, the criminals and their grime. But before we can see that day, when we do see that day, the time that those people will stay in power will be measured in days and weeks, not months or years. But if we do not unlock what they've done, if we do not rebut their magic, if we do not cancel out their curses, then it is conceivable that their system will limp along and survive for another decade, another century, even if it appears that is improbable. So, Are there judges, lawyers, are there public servants following some general form of law today? Yes, there is. I mean, sheriffs and and, and police may shoot the occasional person, but they're not shooting everybody. Judges may be corrupt, but they're not jailing every person that comes into their chambers. So there is some justice still in the system. Our job is not to presume who is good and who is bad, but to represent the law, to honour the law, to respect the law. And at the end of the day, yes, it will come down to tyrants clinging on by their fingernails, being out and out brutes. But when that happens, the system's over and we're not there yet. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. Okay? Yeah. Very good. All right, next 
question. Uh, just as a reminder also for those of you on the phone lines, if you have a question you'd like to call in and um, ask, star 8 puts you in the question queue. And uh, those of you on the chat, looks like you're doing well, uh, typing question, the word question in all uppercase following your question uh, typed out in, in proper case, upper and lower case. So I really appreciate that. It helps us catch your question. So the next question we have, Frank, is does a living trust negate being subject to the dictates of a probate court, and thus taking the criminals out of the equa equation? Does a living trust? Um, one of the things we've got to avoid is trying to do three moves in once. Right. So, so let, let's let's change the words for the moment instead of probate and intestate and trust, let's call it monopoly. Okay, let's call it the game of monopoly. Now, the game of monopoly has rules. And of course, one of the issues we have in playing their version of monopoly is they keep cheating. And no one likes playing a game that cheats, yeah? But the point is, there are certain rules. And one of the rules is that you can't do three moves at once. So what we're saying when it comes to intestate and the state in their system is we need to clean up that aspect. We need to kill those presumptions. And what is the vehicle that we would like to use moving forward? Well, what we'd like to use moving forward, I hope this is what people would like to use, is their own trust. And that's what UKD provides you. UKD provides to you a framework of trusts that protects Every level of your being, every level of your belief system eliminates any and every possible curse that they may have applied to you in the structure of trust and protects you from that. So if you want to use your trust, you've got the trust structure there. Every trust you enter into is a superior trust connected to your true trust, your life born record. So absolutely, that is a great way moving forward. But first... We've got to clean up the mess. And the mess is, where's the proof we're general executor? Well, I can, I can go and do an EI number. That's a bit of a messy way. What's the clearest way? In their system, what is the clearest document that identifies the general executor? It's the will. Well, then let's do it properly. And that's all I'm saying. Let's do things properly. And if the system's response to us is to break its own rules, let the heavens fall, but let us remain true to, to, to recognizing the law for what it is, better or worse. Now, I don't know if I answered it clearly enough, but do you, Terry, do you think I answered that? Yes, I think, your, that helps. Yeah. Okay. I think that helps quite a bit. All right, um, next question. Uh, I'm doing these in order, so I just see a question here. How does one put thumbprints on certificates before the package is, is sent? Um, okay, Th this, is a, uh, this is an anomaly that has existed in the instruction of the ecclesiastical deed polls up until now. And what I've been saying the last few weeks is that we are going to be revising the material on ecclesiastical deeds. I've asked everyone, and I, I ask again, to please be patient in the revisions because this information has taken quite a bit of time and effort just to get in perspective, let alone into workable templates for you. But from next week, all the material will be updated and reflected on the court sites. These are websites that you can go and download from the University of Eucadia and they will be listed there for you and they will be listed on the front page, home page of One Heaven. But for that anomaly where there is the uh, question of uh, attesting that you saw the package being sent before the package was sent, uh, a number of those anomalies will be corrected. So I think that's what they're referring to. I hope that's what they're referring to. Yeah, I, I hope so. It wasn't really specific. I wrote it down uh, just like it uh, was on there. Um, now, the next question uh, changes direction a little bit. Which 
is higher in authority or standing in the economy system, the biz or IMF, and or are they different parts of the same corporation? Yeah, the different the different parts of the same corporation. Uh, the Bank for International Settlement is the bank of banks. The IMF is a fund. The IMF um, represents effectively a um, a political bank agency. Uh, the IMF uh, is the uh, controller in terms of uh, receipts within the system, and uh, it may or may not surprise people, but the tax system is connected back up through into the IMF. But the IMF as a um, as a fund, and that's what it is under the Bretton Woods Agreement, has gone through several iterations. It is a US-based controlled entity, a Washington-based entity, firmly controlled by the um, false Khazar Magyar um, with European, usually a, a European, mostly actually French, believe it or not, being the head of it. Whereas the Bank for International Settlement is old school Venetian, old school Vatican, old school Parasite, based in Basel, Switzerland. And if you've heard of the Basel Accord, that's all out of the uh, Bank for International Settlement. But yes, it's all part of the same rotten system. So World Bank fits in where in that, Frank? World Bank is based um, part of the... Uh, it's an offshoot. Um, it's now... The World Bank is, is regarded as now a organ, terrible word to say, but an organ of the United Nations. And it itself, I think... I would be wrong. I thought its headquarters is in New York, but it may also have uh, its office in Washington. I know for a time it was based in Washington. Uh, it may still have its headquarters there in New York. But the World Bank itself is also a fund, a much smaller fund. And uh, the, the role of the World Bank in the last 20 years has been to effectively convince uh, countries, mostly the third world countries, to enclose the rights of its people, that is to take away the rights of its people, enclose them, that is put them in laws to deprive them, then um, take out money for large, wasteful and irrelevant programs, and then in order to pay the debt, sell the enclosed rights to private enterprise. And that has been the largely successful process that the World Bank has been doing. Very good. Thank you, Frank, for that uh, that, that information. Um, now, is there? There's a question a little bit further down that um, we might as well include in this. They mentioned the CR function. Are they part of that organization? Uh, oh, the Council, for, the CFR, Council for Foreign Relations. Yeah. Council for Foreign Relations is uh, is a, is a an idea that was created by a fellow called Father Edmund Walsh, S.J. Society of Jesus, out of Georgetown University. It was formed um, effectively as a way of bringing together um, bright people that could be trusted. They could uh, be brought into broader discussions and later earmarked for membership within the um, future administrations. But the, CR, the CFR also uh, played an important role in protecting the interests of the United States and, of course, most importantly, uh, in the protection of um, uh, Israel. So the CFR is uh, less formal and in some respects has gone from being a... Uh, it did at some times have some intellectual uh, clout. Now it is largely a meeting club. Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, let's, let's go to the phone lines real quick. We've got uh, Alpha 999. We'll uh, see what question. Alpha? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Frank. Hi. Uh, 
Yeah, my my question to you, I actually got about 37 questions, but I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm, ta- I'm, ta- 